Hey guys, welcome to my new tutorial. And I know I said I was finished with the basic tutorials, but I got quite a few comments saying that it actually helped my last part of this. And it was uploaded on It's Dman's channel, and a few comments on there said I explained things like other people didn't, and they wanted me to keep going and keep explaining things. So here's part two. And if you didn't see part one, I'll put a link in the description and an annotation on the screen now, so you can go check that out before you watch this. Okay, so this is pretty much what we left off with in the last one. We just had text as a 3D layer, a basic background, and some really basic text. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add a camera to rotate the camera around it. I'm going to show you how to animate the text just by using keyframes. And I'm going to show you how to use adjustment layers and maybe particles if we get enough time. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is how to create a camera. So we just need to go Layer, New, Camera. Then we'll just use a 50mm preset and click OK. And nothing's changed as of yet, but if we go up to the top here, we can see our camera tools. If we click and hold that, there's a few different ones here. Um, unified, Orbit, Track X, Y, and Track Z. Now, Orbit is probably going to be the most clear for this. Uh, if we choose that one and go onto our screen, we can click and drag. And you can see we can rotate our camera around our text. Now, it looks a bit weird right now because the background's not changing. But say if we created a few new solids, just uh, small ones, and you know, position these around different places, um, you know, and then made these 3D layers, and we can move some further back into Z space. Okay, now this should help see, <laughs> I guess. If we bring up our camera tool again, you can see, um, yeah, it's in 3D. So this one is further in front of this one, and everything like that. So that's pretty much the benefits of a camera, and um, you know you can create some pretty cool intros with it. And we'll slowly get to that. But what I'm going to show you is how to animate your camera. So say if we wanted to spin our camera around the text. It gets a bit weird animating it with um, the position properties in here because as you can see it doesn't go exactly straight and you know the rotations start getting weird and it more rotates than moves. So I'm going to show you the easiest way to animate a camera. Now if you already use After Effects and you don't do it this way don't be all like oh that's not the easiest way because this is how I do it and yeah. Alright so what we want to do is create a new camera like we just did, and then create a new null object. I went over that a bit fast, so I'll just do it again. Just go layer, new, null object. And now what we can do is make the null object a 3D layer. And the reason for this will become clear in just a sec. If we select our camera layer, and we go to the parent tool, which is this little squiggly line here, if you don't see it, um, press F4 on your keyboard to toggle through the switches, and, or you can like right click and go columns and make sure parent is ticked. So what we want to do is click and hold that squiggly line and then on the camera layer, make sure you select the one on the camera layer and then drag it up to the null object. And what that's going to do is it's going to copy every value from the null object to the camera layer. So say if we press P to bring up position, we can move the position on our null object layer and it moves our camera. So now we've pretty much got an easy way to animate our camera. So I'm going to show you just how to do a really basic animation. If we try and center this as much as possible, again you can bring up your guides like I showed you in the last one, but just for this sake I'm not going to get much into it. Now I'm going to show you how to use keyframes. So if we press R to bring up our rotation and we go say to one second, you want to move your time indicator to where you want your animation to begin. Now the Y rotation will orbit around the text like that, so say if we just want to do a spin around our text, go to the one second mark or wherever you want it to start, and then click this little stopwatch next to rotation, and that'll create this keyframe on our timeline, and it's this little yellow looking diamond shape. Now if we wanted it to rotate and only take a second, we can go forward to say the two second mark, and then drag our Y rotation slider all the way around, or we can just type in 360 or just one in the one times column like it automatically did there and we can see it automatically creates that animation 
So that's pretty cool. That's pretty much keyframes. And then, say if we wanted it to sit still for one second and then rotate back the other way, we can go forward to the three second mark and click this diamond shape here, which is an add keyframe. And that'll create a keyframe on that point and no animation will happen between there, it's just a break. And then we can go, say, forward to four seconds and then change the Y rotation back to zero. And if we watch this now, it rotates around stops for one second and then it'll rotate back so that's pretty cool now say if your keyframes looking a bit jaggedy so as you can see it goes from perfectly still to full speed instantly if you wanted to gradually speed up and gradually slow down what we can do is highlight our keyframes and press F9 on our keyboard uh, I can't do that because it'll stop my recording but right click keyframe assistant and easy ease is the manual way to do it and your keyframes are going to change shape and if we watch that now, it'll gradually speed up, and then gradually come to a stop. And it's just a nice way to pretty much finish off all your animations, and it makes them look a lot smoother and a lot nicer. Okay, so that's pretty much keyframing. Now, keyframing works with any value thing as well. So you can use position, so we can go forward to, say, 5 seconds, press the stopwatch, go forward to 6 seconds, and then drag our camera down. And there we go. It creates that animation again and then we can smooth that out the same way as we just did and it also works with opacity so I'll show you that in a sec when we go to animate our text so we've pretty much got some basic camera movements going and then go forward to our text and say if we want our text to fade in um, at the one second mark go to that press T on our keyboard and it brings up the opacity values here click the stopwatch again move forward a second and then we can click that keyframe create keyframe and that pretty much creates one on a hundred percent and then we can go back to the original one and drag that to zero and then you can see it fades in spins around spins back camera moves down so now we've got some really basic animations going and if you want to bring up everything you've edited so far you can either press P on your keyboard hold shift and press R and then it'll bring up rotation and position because if you just press P and then R it'll automatically get rid of P which is position so hold shift to bring up multiple ones or if you just press U on your keyboard it'll bring up all the ones that you've edited which is pretty useful so that's pretty good and we can do that on our um, text layer as well so now that we've got basic keyframing out of the way, you can do a few different things with it. So say if we moved our text now by pressing P to bring up position, we can go to 7 seconds, and then click the stopwatch, go to 8 seconds, and then we can move our text itself down instead of the camera. And you can see it creates this animation line here, or this keyframe line. Now there's a few things we can do to change this up a bit. You can see if we click on these, it creates these little tabs with the uh, with a circle on the end. And what you can do is if you click and drag that circle, you can distort the keyframe line here. And then the animation is going to follow that line. So if we watch that, you can see the text kind of goes outwards. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, I'm not showing you every everything here. All of these are used for different things. And it's pretty much up to you to come up with what you're going to need to use them for. So, I'm not going to tell you exactly what to make. Also, don't think you have to do every animation one second apart like I am. I'm just doing that for the sake of the tutorial, so it's easy for you to follow along. You can do half a second, or you can create instant like animations. It really doesn't make any difference. It's up to your personal preference. Okay, so now that I've shown you how to animate a camera as well as animate a layer, um, I'm going to show you what an adjustment layer does. So, if we go Layer, New Adjustment Layer, nothing has changed yet but what I'm going to show you is pretty cool so an adjustment layer affects every single layer below it so say if we get the curves adjustment which um, it controls brightness and contrast and everything like that and say we play around with it you can see it affects every single layer so it affects the background and your text layer now it'll affect every single layer under it so no matter how many solids you have under it it'll affect all of them the same amount. But uh, what we can do is drag our adjustment layer below our text layer and that way it only affects the background. So that way we can do things like tint the background. So if we just type tint in and drag that onto our adjustment layer, 
you know, we can tint the background without tinting the text. And then we can keep stacking up different effects onto that adjustment layer and keep adjusting the background and come up with something that you like the look of. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So I just pretty much showed you how to basically animate and then use what you just learned to create bigger and better animations and you can create, you know, text flying through space. Say if we get our camera position here um, and we slide that up, you can see the got like basic movements going everything like that so pretty much get creative um, play around with effects play around with keyframes and you know you can create some pretty cool stuff if this was useful be sure to thumbs up the video and leave a comment if I should make more of these keep going and gradually get up there um, other things I could cover is masking more advanced camera movements particles everything like that so if this was helpful be sure to check my channel out Hit the subscribe button if you're not. You can see my work I do with After Effects as well as Sony Vegas tutorials and a lot of different things. So um, thanks to everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.